Hello everyone and welcome as you're coming in. I just wanna say welcome. And my name is Rosalia Felice and I'm the manager at Career Advising and Transition Services at McGill School of Continuing Studies. If you've been to any of our sessions, you know that and you certainly know my wonderful colleagues as well. We have Valerie. Hi everyone, welcome to Power Skills. And Nayo. Bonjour tout le monde, nice to be here. We all sincerely welcome you. And if this is the first session you've ever been to at Power Skills, whether it's this time or previous times, please let us know in the chat. We would be very curious to know that. Our speaker today, however, has been to Power Skills before. She was with us at the last session, and her session had such wonderful feedback. So we are so excited and thrilled to have her back. Um, before we get started, I just want to tell everybody feel free to use the chat at any point to talk, you know, connection is a big part and networking is a big part of power skills. So feel free to use the chat to talk amongst each other. Um, if you need any point of clarification at any time, just put it in the chat and we'll be monitoring the chat. And then um, we'll take it from there. But I, I am so excited to introduce our speaker to Rumi. Now, usually I would never read a bio. I don't like doing that. And I would tell you a little something personal, but I just love her bio. So Bear with me while I read it. And then if after I finish, we can give her a warm either round of applause um, or you know, make her feel excited. But before we do any of that, I just want to play a video. This is a to acknowledge the land that we are on, that we are presently on here at Cats in Montreal. And you are all also on uh, indigenous land. So if we can just we'll start with that video and then I will introduce to Rumi and we'll get going. Thank you, Valerie, for playing that. Undoubtedly, uh, we are all on Indigenous land, as I said before. And if you happen to know what land you're on, please go ahead and put it in the chat. Um, we play this in front of before every session now as we acknowledge the importance of the Indigenous people who came before us and had gatherings long before anyone else was here in North America. So thank you for that. And if, like I said, if you know what land you're on, or please go ahead and put that in the chat. It's always interesting. The Credit River Hurons. Thank you so much, Karina, for adding that. And it's just wonderful. There are um, there are wonderful places where you can go see the history of the land where you're on. And so we will provide that in the chat after for your interest and education. So thank you so much. Now it is my pleasure, and I'm saying it again, but we 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 uh, we're keeping the suspense going to introduce to Rumi. So like I said, I'm going to read her bio. Turumi is the daughter of immigrants and spent four years in an orphanage. She started her career as an engineer, but fell in love with marketing. After 10 years experience in startups, mid-sized companies, and large corporations, she is now the CEO of Boston Tech Creative and founder of the Story Genius Marketing Accelerator. There are only two things in life in business you need to own to be successful, your value and your story. Yellow cardigans, romantic comedies, sourdough bread bring sweetness to my life along with my three beautiful children. And I wanted to read this because nothing's more exciting of knowing about, than knowing a little bit about our speakers and I just love the way this was phrased. So without further ado, let's warmly welcome Taruni Okano. Thank you, thank you so much for that intro, Rosalia. I am so excited, feeling so honored to be here with you all today. And I so appreciated that we started this by taking a moment to appreciate the indigenous who were the, really the first to live on this land, even this land that I live on here in Massachusetts. And, you know, it's important to know our history, right? And our history is also part of our story. And when, when we understand that, right, it gives us a greater awareness. It gives, it gives us a greater appreciation for our lives. So uh, I appreciate that, that you all are doing that. 
Um, so before we jump in and get started, I just had the strong feeling that I had to start the session by just taking a breather for all of us, right? Like with the pandemic, it's just been so crazy. Like people are stressed, people are anxious, some people are even feeling depressed. And a lot of times if we can just take a moment to be present, it just, it changes our whole countenance. And I feel like we can also um, take in the information, right? That we're about to consume better if we're here present in this moment. So if it's okay, I would like to ask for the next 10 seconds, if we could just focus, <clears throat> excuse me, on being present in this current moment. So if you wish, close your eyes. I just want you to feel your body relax. Feel where you have that tension, release it. Feel yourself sitting in your chair. Feel the clothing against your skin. And if you kind of feel that stress inside, just ah, sigh it out, you know, just get it out, let it out so that we can just be relaxed and present here in this moment. All right. So we all know that the theme of this Power Skills Conference is transformation. COVID has had such an impact on all of our lives. And you know, as much as we like to say, oh, we're coming out of the pandemic, we're kind of still in the middle <laughs> of a pandemic, right? <laughs> so while we want to prepare for the future, we also need to take care of ourselves in this moment. And so along this theme of transformation, I thought speaking about stories, was appropriate because stories transform, right? We hear that all the time, like, oh, tra stories are so transformative. You know, we can all level up in our lives, in our businesses, in our careers by telling a story. You know, if you're a business owner, you can do it in your marketing. If you're sales, you can do it to increase your sales. If you're looking for a promotion, right? If you're trying to convince someone that your idea is the best, right? So good stories are stories that inspire action. So what does that mean? I wanted to give a, a quick example. So actually just last night, I was speaking to my friend Jennifer, who is a poet. That's what she does for a living. And she told me this story that she said, so I heard a story that completely changed the trajectory of my career. And I was like, really? And um, so here's her story. She said, I was, um, I was sitting in a sermon, listening to a pastor who was a woman. She had visited, this pastor had visited Las Vegas and had, an, <clears throat> had the opportunity to meet a sex worker and heard her story. After speaking to this, <clears throat> excuse me, this worker, she felt devastated and her heart felt heavy because she thought, you know, I really wish I could help this woman, but I just don't know how. I don't know how. Like, I, I want to do something, but I don't know what, I don't know how. And so she said, if any of you in the audience feel like you can do something to help this group of people, you know, please do it. And so Jennifer, my friend, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so Jennifer, it just hit her. She said, you know what? She's speaking to me. I can do something. That was nine years ago. This year, she published a poetry book on sex trafficking. These poems that she published were not her poems because their stories are not for her to make up. So what she did is she started volunteering at a safe home of former sex traffickers of, you know, victims of sex trafficking and taught them creative writing, taught them poetry, and, you know, was able to produce this 
work. And now her passion is to help bring their message to this world. So I know it's a heavy story, <laughs> but it was just so transformative. And it just happened to happen yesterday that I felt like, wow, this is like, this is really powerful. Like one story can really change, can really transform someone's life. And so I'm hoping that uh, today you guys will walk away with some concrete skills to help you tell better stories. So I want to make sure we keep this session engaging. Feel free to use the chat if you have questions, if you have comments, um, whatever it is, you know, feel free to use the chat. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so are we all ready to work today? This is a workshop after all. <laughs> so if you're Marie, ready. I just had a question on yeah, that. Sure. Story. Do you have the name of the book? Because I'm sure other people would be interested in it if that's okay with you, but you share that. Yeah. If not, we could, yeah. I could, I don't have the name of the book. I think it's something like objectified. Okay. Um, but uh, I can definitely look that up maybe during the uh, workshop yeah. session and then sure. I'll stick in the chat for you. Thank you, Tarumi, no problem. Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, all right, so if we're ready to work, uh, give me a yes in the chat. Okay, Valerie says, yes, I'm ready. Okay, great. Thanks so much, everyone. So, okay, so stories are made of words. And so I'd like us to start with a small activity to flex, start flexing our creative muscles. Um, so what we're gonna do is write an alliteration. So what you're gonna do is take your, either the first letter of your first name or the first letter of your last name, you know, just in case someone has like an X or something. Oh, I see someone. <laughs> it might be hard to come up with um, an alliteration and then come up with an adjective to describe yourself. So just an example for me, for my first name, it would be T. So uh, my alliteration would be tapping to Rumi <laughs> and tapping as in like tap dance. Yes, I tap dance. <laughs> so once you have your alliteration, um, put it in the chat. <laughs> and then another example using my last name, O, uh, might be like obnoxious Okano. Okay, it doesn't have to be a true adjective to describe yourself. I hope I'm not obnoxious, but um, just uh, those are some examples for you. So as you're thinking about your alliterations, um, real quick, I'm going to tell you another story. Okay, so this is a story that my kids love for me to tell over and over. Okay, so <laughs> Imagine, um, so me, I'm five years old and I'm at my sister's fourth birthday party. I am so jealous because she has all these gifts and she has just opened up a gift of purple Care Bear shoes. Okay, at this point, I can't take it anymore. All right, so let me um, real quick share my screen in case there are folks here that are not familiar with Care Bears. So uh, one second here. Okay. All right, so Care Bears, what are Care Bears? Here we go. <laughs> purple Care Bear shoes, right? When you're five, you care a lot about purple Care Bear shoes. <laughs> okay, so I start crying, right? And, um, I know I'm not gonna get any presents because it's not my birthday. And so I tell my mom like, this is so not fair. Like I want purple camera shoes too. <laughs> and instead of comforting me, she walks out of the room. <laughs> and so of course I start to cry even more. <laughs> like she doesn't care, <laughs> you know? And a few minutes later, she comes back in and uh, she hands me a box and I open it up. And what do you know? It was a pair of the exact same Care Bear shoes, one size bigger. <laughs> and of course I stopped crying and I was happy because I got my, I got my purple Care Bear shoes. So, um, all right. So I just want to tell that story uh, because I feel like, you know, not all stories have to be 
serious, right? But the reason I tell the story is I was like, why do my kids keep asking me to tell the same story over and over again? And I realized after I studied story structure, I was like, oh, it actually has all the elements of a great story. And so we'll learn that structure um, in a bit. But I would love to see some of these uh, alliterations that people came up with, if I can figure out how to see them. Okay, so uh, let's see, Joyful Jennifer, Zestful Zhao. Ooh, I, I like the creativity there. Same sound, even though you have different letters. Um, Dynamic Deborah, Soaring. Ooh, that's a good adjective. Soaring Cirque, Quintessential Quintina. I love it. X-ray. Xenia. <laughs> That's awesome. Tenacious Tanya. Smooth. Let's see. I'm going to botch this one. Skiortino. Um, Social Butterfly. Oh, I like how you did like the first and last name. Terrific Tom. I guess there's a joke there. Rowdy. Rosalia. Extraordinary. Xenia. Xylophone. Xenia. <laughs> Lively Leia. Okay, awesome. Helpful Heather. Okay, great job, guys. Okay, super duper. So, um, all right. So as I mentioned, a good story is one that inspires action. So, so far I've given you examples of stories that are more personal, um, but I just wanted to give you a different type of story that um, looks different than the ones that we've talked about. So, <clears throat> A story could also be as simple as this. This is a post um, that I posted on LinkedIn last week. And the text says, you want your website to be perfect, so you stall. You want your lead magnet to be perfect, so you hesitate. You want your emails to be impeccable, so you never write them. Here's a reminder for all of us, published is better than perfect. Right. And we said that the best stories are stories that inspire action. Well, the next day I got a note um, from a colleague or from someone that I know. And she says, oh, my gosh, I saw your post. I've been hesitating to post on LinkedIn. And thanks to reading your post, I took action. Right. So this, even though it doesn't have the typical format of a story, is also a story. Alrighty. So um, also, I thought it might be fun exercise to let you kind of see the inner workings of what like kind of how I judge the quality of marketing that I see. So um, this is how I do it. Bad, better, best. Okay, so what is bad? When I see marketing that is only talking about that company's products or services, I'm like, oh, they're probably not doing super well. Better is when I see a company talking about a solution to their customers' needs. And the best is when I see customers talking about, or sorry, when I see companies talking about their customers' problem. Or they're, and they're teaching and inspiring them. And so this is where the stories that sell come in. We want to be writing stories um, that create the best kind of marketing. Okay, so again, whether this is marketing, whether this is you know, convincing your boss of something, right? All the same principles apply here. So I thought it would actually be really fun to take a sneak peek at my actual live LinkedIn feed right now and um, kind of like work through and judge like what, what you think, how you would rank that post as bad, better, or best. So let me, um, so here's my post. I mean, here's my wall and clearly the Japanese isn't gonna be working for us here. So we'll skip over that one. Um, okay, so here's one right here. Okay, so this is an ad from Clarabine. I have no idea who, who this company is. It says, download this guide to learn the 22 best ways to collect first party data. Don't wait for all third party tracking to leave before you learn how to leverage your own data. Okay, um, I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> it 
it seems like they're offering something, but um, yeah, I read that and I'm like, I'm not sh- I, I don't know what they're saying. So you know what? The message to me isn't clear. I don't know how it's relevant to me. So I'm going to mark this one as bad. Okay. So we're going to, we're just going to, on that basis, we're going to mark it as bad. Um, okay. So this is a thank you note. So let's skip over that because that's more of a personal one. Okay. So let's look at this one. So I would like you guys to take a look at this post. She says, step 11, letting go forgiveness. Third option, that they could find a way to value and accept her apology seemed off the table. Okay, no, this is, this is, I'm going to say this is bad because I don't, I'm not, I'm not getting it. I don't know about you guys. I'm not getting it. Okay. All right, here we go. Let's do this one. Okay, so take a look at this post. And tell me if you think it's bad, better, or best, okay? This is Maggie. You're great at what you do, but not so great at talking about what you do. I built Brand Camp so your work can be truly understood by the people you want to call in. So in the chat, I want you to tell me, do you think it's bad, better, or best? What do you guys think? You're great at what you do, you're not so great at talking about what you do. I built brand camp to work to be truly understood. Okay. All right. So I'm seeing here most people are saying better. One person said better, best. Many people will recognize truth of first sentence better. Okay. Okay. Tom says best. And I, I identified with the problem. Okay. Cool. So Um, So before I give you the answer, let's again, take a quick look at the criteria and um, okay. So was she talking about her products and services? She was, Um, but her first line, right? You are great at what you do, but not so great about talking about what you do. So she is actually, if you look here, right, talk about your solution to their customer needs. Um, she is talking about the solution in the second sentence, right? But actually, I would rank hers as best because she's actually talking about her customer's problems. So let's just take another look at it. Um, you are great at what you do, but not so great at talking about what you do. So I think she does a really great job in her post, right? Because it's not about her. She, at least she doesn't start talking about her um, or her solution. She's starting by talking about you, the customer and the customer's problem. So, so congratulations for those who said best. That is the correct answer. So, all right. So that's how I judge marketing criteria. Um, so so, yep, nice job, Thomas. And I think someone else said better, best, uh, Miriam. So nice job there. Okay, so before we really dive in, um, I just wanted to give you a little bit more background about myself. So um, as Rosalia mentioned, my background's in chemical engineering. So I have a bachelor's and master's degree. And then my first engineering job was at a green energy startup company, which um, was basically my dream job. (laughs) So that was amazing. But then as startups do, they shut down. And so I ended up working at, you know, going from startup to third largest chemical company in the world, (laughs) Dow Chemical. And then while I was there, um, I got my professional engineering license, which at the time I had two little ones, like literally like under two at home, you know, but I stayed up or I stayed at work until 10 PM every night for a month to like study for the test to get this. So I'm definitely really proud of that. (laughs) And that after that, I got my first marketing job at Aspen Tech and fell in love with marketing. And now I am in my third year of business um, at Boston Tech Creative. And um, what I do is Um, I help smart business owners who constantly worry about where their next lead will come from. As an engineer, I understand the importance of clear messaging and laying a clear marketing foundation so they can start hiring full-time marketing staff and grow their business. 
faster. So that's what I do work-wise. But ultimately, I define myself as a wife and mother. So my husband and three beautiful children. So they are my joy for sure. Okay. All right. So any, any questions, um, Valerie, have we gotten any questions or anything up to this point? Are we all still here? Are you here with me? Let me know in the chat and uh, we're going to go ahead and dive in here. So, all right. So three things we're going to cover here today. Awesome. Jennifer Markella says, yes, we are here. Awesome. Okay. So the first thing we're going to cover is uh, what I call flip the script or shift to the other mindset. Essentially, it means putting yourself in the other person's shoes. Second thing uh, we're going to cover is we're going to learn a proven story structure. And then finally, I'd love for you guys to practice what you learned. So that's their... That's what we will be doing. And um, so let's dive in here. Okay. So flip the script, shifting to the other mindset. If you can't tell by now, I love telling stories. So <laughs> I'm going to tell another story <laughs> to explain this concept. So on my first marketing job at Aspen Tech, um, mind you, I have no formal marketing education. Um, I first day in the job, my boss calls me to his office and says to Rumi, I want you to run the first industry centric marketing campaign. Uh, so I smiled and I nodded my head and I ran back to my desk and I Googled, what is a marketing campaign? <laughs> um, I had no idea what a mar marketing campaign was. Nonetheless, an industry centric marketing campaign, no clue, no clue. Um, however, that marketing campaign became the best performing marketing campaign the company had ever seen. It was showcased globally. The metrics were all above average. And I grew my product from five to eight million in within 18 months. So people ask me, like, how, how were you so successful in your marketing campaign? And yes, of course, I use best practices and you know all that stuff and created great marketing content. But the key was I had to work with the team to execute this marketing campaign. So the reason for my success is that when I was trying to convince others to try out a new way of doing things in marketing, I made them think like, I made them think that my suggestions were their idea. <laughs> so some might think this is a little bit manipulative, but I would prefer to think it as, okay, if I want this person to do something for me, like, what do they care about? You know, why don't I put myself in their shoes? And, you know, they want, they want to be successful too, right? They want the marketing campaign to be successful. So instead of like telling them, right, this is how it should be done, I need to figure out how I'm going to word it so that they, you know, so that they can actually get on board. So that's an example of shifting to the other person's mindset instead of just sort of like jumping in and forcing your opinion on them. So here's another story where I did a bad job <laughs> shifting to the other mindset. Okay. So my son uh, last year was buying a, looking for a winter jacket online. And so he had picked like four that he had really liked. And I said, okay, let's wait for daddy to, um, you know, pick, pick the best one for you. Um, and he looks at me and he goes, um, I can make my own decision <laughs> on my, on my winter jacket. And in my head, I was like, oh my gosh, he's already 13 years old. Like I'm still here thinking he's like six and, you know, he can't make his own decisions, but like I hadn't, you know, in my head, I hadn't put myself in his shoes, right. And his age. And so he kind of gave me a look, which is, which is fine. But <laughs> um, can anyone relate to that? Does anyone anyone have uh have kids that they like to remind you that 
they're not babies anymore. Um, all right, so, um, okay, so when we are trying to, uh, let's see, oh yes, okay, good, I'm not the only one. <laughs> and this is my oldest is eight, and already acts like that. Tanya says, my six-year-old does this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I, I wish. Uh, yeah. I mean, I knew teenage years were going to be bad, but like, oh my gosh, if you've never had teenager, just yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Um, okay. So the first thing we need to do when we're creating a story is think about the other's mindset, right? So um, when we do that, right, it can result in more money, you know, increased success. Uh, it can result in your son telling you that, mom, I can pick my jacket by myself, right? <laughs> um, I can't draw, but okay. So now that we've got the right mindset, now we're going to be ready to learn the story structure. So does the, does that make sense? The whole putting ourselves in the other person's mindset um, in terms of the story we're going to create. Okay, cool. All righty. So let's go to the story structure. This is where we get to the fun stuff. I can move the slide. All right, here we go. All right. So here you'll see five different elements, desire, obstacle, guide, struggle, and fulfillment. So this story structure is based on um, Joseph Campbell. So he wrote a book called The Hero's Journey, and he analyzed a bunch of like folk tales, fairy tales, all like the blockbuster movies, right, to say to see like, are there common elements of story um, that make a great story? So I've just simply, I think his had like 18 elements. I've simplified it here down to five. And instead of explaining to you what um, each of these means, I wanna go back to that story I told you about being a five-year-old um, so that you can kind of see what each of these things mean. And then also, um, learn it so that you can write your own story. So, all right. So we start in my story, a five-year-old girl really wants a gift. She's, uh, I was, it was not my birthday, <laughs> but I wanted a gift, right? I wanted those purple Care Bear shoes, but I had an obstacle. It wasn't my birthday. So how was I going to get them? You know, it seemed pretty impossible, but you know, I decided to complain to my mom, who I say as the guide here, because unless I had her, I would not be able to fulfill my desire, right? Like I wouldn't be able to get purple care bear shoes on my own. And so my mom in this case was the guide. So I went to her, try to tell her, like, I really want a gift. You know, I really want some purple care bear shoes. Um, but then she left the room, <laughs> right? So then I cried more. So this is the struggle, back to the struggle. And then finally, when she came back with the box, now I was able to fulfill, she was able to fulfill my desire and I was able to experience fulfillment. So this is the basic story structure. It's simple, but it's super powerful. I use this not only for you know, creating my clients' brand stories. I use it for blog posts. I use it for my social media posts. I use it, you know, when I tell stories to my kids. <laughs> um, when I'm speaking to you like this, um, you know, I use, I use the same structure. So it's, it's simple, but it's really, really powerful. And when I was analyzing story structure, I actually discovered something that completely blew my mind. So um, this isn't, I mean, it is relevant, but it was just like something I noticed that completely changed the way I looked at life actually. So, so here it is. So if you look at this, um, this word, desire, right? Typically desire, whoops, how do I? 
typically desire is a positive emotion, right? So I'm going to put a smiley face to depict that. And then we see obstacle, which is more of a neg, right? Elicits obstacles elicit a negative emotion. And then when we, like when I asked my mom for help or what I wanted, that gives you hope, right? The, the guide can give you hope. So that's more of a positive emotion. But then, right, she left the room and I struggled. And again, you know, there's a negative emotion here. And then finally for fulfillment, this is a very happy, you know, to know, like not all stories, um, not all stories end well, right? <laughs> but this is sort of the most attractive structure of a story. Some of us like sad endings, some of us don't. I, I definitely like happy endings. Um, so, so here's the thing. Up, down, up, down, up, right? So what this tells me is that, okay, so the reason we love stories so much and we resonate with stories so much and we get addicted and binge watch shows on Netflix, <laughs> that's me, um, is because we see our own life, our own emotions, our own struggles, our own happiness reflected within stories. So if you think about it that way, ups and downs in life are natural. Ups and downs in life are expected, but not only are they natural and expected, they're actually necessary to achieve our desires. Okay, I'm going to say that again. <laughs> Ups and downs in life are not only natural and expected, but they're actually necessary to achieve our desires. You know, I'm not going to say everyone's journey, uh, you know, you have to struggle in order for fulfillment. I'm not going to say that, but I'm going to say that the typical, you know, the natural way of progression in life is experiencing these ups and downs. And that's why I love marketing so much is because so much of it applies to life, you know, as well as marketing. So, all right. So at this point, have any questions, comments? Everyone still here with us? Make sense? Let me know in the chat. Yes. Hugh says yes. Zhao says yes. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So now comes uh, the fun part where you guys get to practice this. Okay. So because this is a workshop, <laughs> I am gonna expect you to work. Um, if there are those that you know are at work <laughs> at the moment and can't um, you know, talk and such, that is totally fine. Um, so what we're gonna do is um, I'm gonna give you about five minutes to kind of jot down a story, either, you know, open up a Word doc or, you know, jot it down on a piece of paper. I have the structure here up on the screen for you. And then after that, I'm going to put us into breakout rooms um, for 20 minutes. And each of you can share your story, you know, give a little feedback um, to each other on that. Um, and then if we have time at the end, I'd like to, to come back and um, and share, have a couple of people um, share their stories with us. So, okay. So I'd like you to think about like what kind of story do you wanna write today? No, don't put too much pressure on yourself. This is just, uh, you know, we're just practicing here. So it can be a personal story. Um, you know, it can even be a made up story. Uh, it could be, you want to write about your business. Um, yeah, whatever, whatever you want to do, right? The point is, let's just start getting comfortable with using this structure. Um, and, uh, so while you're doing that for people who, you know, are just listening or, 
um, need a little more support to try and figure this out, I am going to give an example of a Disney movie because basically all Disney movies follow this exact same story structure. Okay, so for those who are who want to write their own story and share share in a breakout room, go ahead and do that now. If you just want to listen, um, yeah, you can listen to the story about Lion King. Okay. <laughs> So, so we start with desire. So if you remember Lion King, um, there's the little cub, uh, lion cub Simba, and he wants to be king. And he's kind of a snotty little child. <laughs> um, but there you go. You know, his desire was to be king, but he had an obstacle, right? One, clearly he was too young to start. But then his mean uncle, right, his evil uncle made Simba believe that he killed his father. And so that's the obstacle here in this story. And so Simba runs away and lives in Hakuna Matata land. And uh, he's seemingly happy there, except for that something's missing, right? Because he hasn't yet fulfilled his desire. So the guide in his, in his case was Nala, his friend who comes, she comes looking for him and finds him. He also sees a vision of his father saying, you know, um, like you are king. And so he finally decides to come back to the pride land to save his, uh, save the animals that were ravaged by his uncle Scar. But before he could become king, he had to fight uncle Scar and unfortunately had to fight him to his death. So that's the struggle. And then the fulfillment is he eventually was able to become king so that is yeah that's an example of the story so for um, folks that are working on your story um, I'll give you another minute to do that uh, in the meantime um, Valerie if you want to get the the breakout rooms set up and um if you could, you know, once you get in your room, if you could introduce each other, um, you know, share your story and uh, we'll see you back in 20 minutes. And for those who don't want to participate in that, just don't join the breakout room. Just stay with us here in the main room. Um, we might have some music or, or not, <laughs> but we'll, we'll hang out here. And uh, yeah. I'm excited to uh, hear you share your stories with each other. Are there any questions at this point? Yeah, to Rumi, <clears throat> sorry, I didn't get a question. Any examples for a workplace related story? Yeah, absolutely. So um, so I guess there's a couple of uh, different examples. So one could be um, like, uh, see, okay. Building community, okay. Yeah, I could give a workplace related story. So, okay, let's say that your desire is to get a raise. Okay, you you want to come or to get a promotion from your boss. So, in this case, you could write your story either from your perspective or your manager's perspective. So, from from your perspective, that's pretty obvious, right? Like you have this desire, but you you know you're not sure how you're going to get a raise, right? So, you need to like get some information, um, get support from your boss, right? To say, what do I need to do to like get this, get this promotion? And then you have to do that stuff and then you'll finally get the promotion. We could write a story from your manager's perspective, right? So if you're gonna convince your manager, like I'm gonna be, I want a promotion. How are we gonna use story to convince him or her? So um, you're gonna say, look, my desire is to, to get a promotion, right? Um, obstacle, so this obstacle is now your manager's obstacle. So your manager's obstacle might be, well, I'm only allowed to give a raise, um, you know, twice, once a year, right? So you're gonna have to wait. Um, but then you come in as the guy, okay, so how do, how can I help you? How can I make you look good, right? So that, um, so that I can get, you know, I can be that one that gets the promotion next year. And then the struggle would be essentially whatever that thing was that you identified with your manager. And then 
Um, and then fulfillment would be, you know, he's, he looks good, right. For, for your manager. So fulfillment in this case, isn't you necessarily getting the promotion because that's your fulfillment, but it'd be your manager, like having this like star performer who, um, uh, who's, who's making him look good. So that's a story from like a work-related story. Is that, is that helpful? And Josie says, I'm building a community of practice for practitioners and wondering if the guide is the community belonging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so if you're a business owner, Josie, um, what, how you want to think of this is your customer is the hero, the main character of the story, and you are the guide. So you're going to view your business it from the perspective of your customer. So, um, so let's see, their desire is maybe to become a, uh, a thrive, having a thriving practice, right? Their obstacle is they feel alone, they need guidance, but they don't know how to fulfill their goal. And so you would be the guide that comes in and says, you know, hey, I have this community that's going to help you okay so you are the guide here and then the struggle you're right is the struggle will be the work they need to put into the community in order to reach their goal so does that make sense Josie cool okay righty. Anyone else here have questions? Feel free to put them in the chat. Uh, Jennifer, we'll, uh, we'll reassign you again. So just hang right on. Thank you for that. OK, thank you. Okay. So it looks like. Looks like most people stayed in the main room here. Have a few. Joined. So is any here anyone here want to join a room but having trouble or not sure how to join a room? I think to Rumi, from what I see here, everyone is in a room uh, except for one person. So I'm assuming they didn't want to go. I can't join because I'm in the car and driving. Yes. <laughs> Angela, yes, please don't join. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that, Angela. But if you have, uh, for those of us in the main room, please feel free to continue to ask your questions or comment while we're waiting for the breakout rooms to come back. So, um, no problem. And thank you for multitasking and be careful. <laughs> yeah, please be careful. <laughs> well, I guess what I'm seeing, for example, Rosalia, like in room four, I think there's only one person in there. So maybe we could move. Yes, I'll reassign him them. to like room seven because there's only two people okay, here. Okay, perfect. We'll move to room seven. Done. Oh, sorry. I'm, there's a lot of movement. So I'm trying to catch oh. up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> don't worry about it <laughs> I never thank you I'm working while I yeah no problem I don't mean to see your name out loud it's your being apologized for that yeah completely understandable and we know that with breakout rooms a not everybody can do it because they're not in the position to do it um b some people don't like that completely understandable so but like I said feel free to ask uh, your questions or write in the chat since we have Tarumi here with us so we could take advantage of that Tarumi I, I was wondering I do have a question because you say you have no, no formal training in marketing yeah so how uh, I was wondering how did colleagues clients is this this ever an issue that comes up because I love this I love talking to people who didn't necessarily study or on a different completely different tra trajectory and I know you went from engineering to marketing so has this mm -hmm. ever been an issue and how do you deal with it mm. yeah so it 
hasn't ever been an issue, actually. Um, I think that in technology companies, which is where I was working, they actually value your background in engineering more than your skills in marketing. So that could be an indication of sort of, you know, the way that the industry, that industry kind of discounts maybe the value of marketing a little bit <laughs> because they don't really, you know, whether, I mean, you know, some did have an MBA, some engineers did have an MBA, most didn't, but I would say I didn't tend to see a huge advantage um, one way or the other. So I did a lot of um, self self-learning. Yeah. Amazing. And I'm so happy you said that because at the School of Continuing Studies, we see students and often there when there's a hesitancy in making a career move or career shift really to another industry. And sometimes they think they don't have enough experience or necessarily 100% targeted education. And I, I think especially now in this day and age, there's a lot of ways to get from point A to point B that are not necessarily linear. So I'm so happy you said that. And especially that you said that it wasn't an issue for you. So I love that. Mm. And sometimes our backgrounds, like you say, the trend more than, you know, the transferable skills, but I love that they value something else rather than the actual thing you're doing. And I've seen that in a lot of different contexts. So thank you. Uh, and now I see Josie has a question setting context here. Can I use the structure to build and sell my why for belonging to the membership I'm selling to my community? Sounds like it has all the components to create the hook. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is exactly, like pretty much um, the format I would use for like a pitch, right? So, so I think there's a there's a slight differentiation here um, between your why and then like your why, right? But then your customer's why. So I just want to be clear here. Um, so I, I think what you're saying is the why for your customers, for your clients. So in that case, I would say, yes, absolutely. You can use this as, as a structure to explain, like, why would you want to join um, for the latter? Okay, yeah. So for the latter, I, um, kind of like mission, more like mission statement stuff, which is also very powerful. That's going to be slightly, yeah, that's definitely going to look slightly different, but yeah, absolutely. And feel free, Josie, if you have a follow-up, go ahead and uh, unmute yourself and go ahead and ask. And that goes for everyone else too. If you have a question, please feel free. Oh, also, um, I totally forgot to time. Did, did anyone happen to catch um, when we started? I think it's been about 12 to 15 minutes now. So maybe another, I could I could message everyone and say another five minutes if you'd okay. like. To that yeah. would be okay, super. so let me go ahead and do that. Thank you. And then we'll time it so for it uh, to come back at let's say 1202. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, let's see. Yeah, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask them. But so, uh, Josie, since you asked that, if you notice when I gave my, my description of, of who I am um, and, and then at the end describe my business. I think that you'll see I use these elements. So let's see. I said um, I I help smart business owners who are struggling with finding their next lead, right? So that's their desire is to find, you know, to stop struggling to find their next lead. That's also an obstacle because they're not sure how they're going to do that, right? So then I say as an engineer, um, I help them, or I understand the importance of a clear message and um, a clear marketing foundation to, um, so that's, that's me guiding them, right? We're going to have a clear message and we're going to build your clear marketing foundation so that you can um, start hiring full-time marketing people and grow your business faster. So um, the struggle part's not there just because, you know, that's the work they have to do, but the fulfillment is being able to start hiring marketing staff full-time and grow their business faster. So yeah, that's a, that's an example of how I use it in my business. Jeremy, there's a question from Everett. Okay. Um, when you build a story for social media, Facebook to be particular, do you suggest a word count as such? How long can it be before you lose your audience, particularly for retail products? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I don't, 
I don't really help clients really in the retail space, but based on what I've seen and the ads on Facebook, the posts tend to be like relatively long, right? And if you kind of analyze them, you'll actually see a similar pattern where they're telling a story in the post. So, um, you know, I mean, some marketers will say, keep it short. Some marketers will say, you know, the longer posts work better. So I don't think there's a real rule of thumb there. I think the most important thing is to, to make sure the story is there, right? Like my post you saw was like, my LinkedIn post was super short. Um, but like I said, the ads I see on Facebook are, are pretty long. So um, yeah, I would say try, you know, with marketing, you just got to try and see what works. So Thanks to Rumi and Josie. Thanks you for breaking down your story through the structure. Yeah, you're welcome. Absolutely. I put the chat, I put the name of the book in the, in the chat to Rumi and it is the her hero's journey from Joseph Campbell. I just want to make yes. sure it's the right one. It's the one we're talking about his life and then using, is that correct? There's only one. Uh, I put the. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. yeah Wait, okay, um, I have the book over here. Oh, wonderful. Joseph That's great. Campbell. Oh, you know what? It's the hero. It's the hero with a thousand faces. I miss Ah, that. okay. There was that other one. Let me go grab that <laughs> one also, because there's the hero's journey from here, which is his story. And he, I guess he uses the same structure to talk about that, but let me get that other one too. So it's the hero with a thousand feet. Yeah. Uh, Joseph Campbell. In the meantime, would you like me to bring back the uh, breakout room people? I said at 12.02, because um, I put a broadcast message. I don't know if everybody saw it. So in a couple of minutes, we can close the session. Okay, perfect. Okay. The hero with a thousand faces. Here is, here it is. I'm going to put it in the chat. And then I also just pulled up the, um, the book that from my friend. Um, at the oh, wonderful. So it's called Object. Okay, so everyone I'm writing in the chat, the book I put in the chat is the specific one that Tarumi referenced. The other one is also Joseph Campbell also talking about the hero's journey, but that one talks about it through the lens of his life and this is the original one. Okay, I'm going to broadcast uh, one minute to go and then we can close just to give people um, a warning. Okay, and then we could close it in one minute. So to Rumi, I have another question. I, I, I love asking this question to people. And um, you talk about the biggest fail. I know you mentioned one, but is there an epic fail you can talk about? You don't have to go into details, but um, maybe what you learned from it or why the failure happened? Yeah, that's actually a really good question. My my best friend of like over 35 years, we joke with each other because she's like, you've never failed, have you? <laughs> 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 like everything you touch turns to gold. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm, I'm such a, I'm such a perfectionist. No, I'm, you know, so I don't know if I would call this a fail necessarily, but um you know, one time, uh, I guess when I started my business, right, um, I, you know, you hear all these success stories about people exceeding their income in the first six months or the first year, making a million dollars, you know, in six months. And, and uh, I just, you know, I don't even know how much I made, maybe like 15,000 <laughs> in my first six months. And I felt like such, like, I felt like such a failure, you know, and, and I think the biggest lesson that, that I, you know, that I've been learning is that, you know, it's, everyone fails, right? But you can look at it as a failure or you can look at it as a lesson to be learned. So if I'm only making 15,000 and they're making, you know, 50, a hundred thousand, like, what am I doing? What are they doing that I'm not doing? Yeah. Right. So using it as a stepping stone, right. As part of my story, rather than, um, 
you know, being discouraged. And so I think that's, you know, part of that up and down of, of uh, the story of our life, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And thank you for being so open with that. <laughs> uh, and everyone's back from the breakout rooms now. Okay, fantastic. All right. So um, I hope that whoever um, was able to discuss in the breakout room had a fruitful discussion. Do we have any brave souls <laughs> in the room willing to share or, you know, would like to volunteer someone they were in a group with that had a great story? Uh, Miriam, are you volunteering? Yes, I am. Oh, awesome. Okay. So um, what I did, like my, my story is uh, a post. So I wrote it in the voice of like representing the, the business. And uh, so here's, I'm just going to read it to you. <clears throat> you all want to look your best, right? You want what you wear to not only look chic, but feel comfortable and reflect how awesome you are inside and out. But if you're a plus size woman, you're probably tired of being treated like a second class citizen by the fashion industry. So what do you do? You do tons of research and eventually find brands that carry your size. Great. But then you realize that brand new, these items are just too pricey. What do you do next? Don't despair. Stop feeling second class and start buying secondhand. The circular fashion movement is expanding. According to a 2019 report by ThreadUp, the resale, rental, and subscription models will be the fastest growing sectors in the fashion industry during the next 10 years. Launching soon is the Fat Shinista, an online marketplace where plus-size women like you can come together and not only find affordable pre-loved fashion, but also form a community where your voices can be heard and your authentic selves be seen. No fat shaming allowed because being plus size and sexy is not a contradiction. Everybody is a beach body, y'all. And then I have a bunch of hashtags. Wow, a big round of applause, everyone. Oh Love my goodness. That. Yeah, thanks for sharing. I saw all the elements there, absolutely the desire lots of obstacles you as the guide showing them like hey there is actually a solution for you you know talking about their struggle and then what that um, fulfilling their desire looks like amazing amazing thanks so much for sharing um all right karina thank you um so mine isn't as beautifully written out as miriam's and miriam fantastic concept i love that um uh, I am putting out a post on LinkedIn. Um, I try and post uh, daily, Monday to Friday, and it's going to be about the medal sharing between Barsham and Timberry, the high, the high jumpers in the Olympics. And so I'm really grateful to my group because they helped me uh, work it through a little bit better. So the desire is that these are two Olympians going after gold. Uh, they put a lifetime of work into um, developing their, their, um, their techniques. The obstacle is that each in turn breaks their ankle. Or, and um, so Barsham, I think, broke his, I'm going to say 2012, I'm going to do the research. Tim Berry, I think, was not going to be ready for 2020, but when it got pushed off, he was um, lucky. Uh, so the guide there is that they happen to be on the same training team. They work side by side. They create a good friendship. No, it, um, but the obstacle is that they, sorry, negative, is that they both know that they're going to, each be going for gold separately. Um, on the day of the Olympics, they both hit the same height. And now they have a choice of going for, um, a, a, a going for basically a, I don't know, whatever they I have to obviously do a little more research to get the words right. Um, but they've both hit that, that point. And the guide now becomes the Olympic official who says they can both agree and they can both get a gold. So, Working with, with my team, um, we decided we'd have a two pluses, uh, pluses and minus uh, moves here. Um, so that's the guide. Uh, the struggle is that they could either be the only winner or place their friendship ahead of their desire to be the top winner. Um, and this is not a typical Olympic path. And then they fulfill it by both getting the gold. Love it. I love it. It's so we'll see it when it's written. <laughs> yeah, it's so relevant, Concept. right? With the Olympics going on right now and a great way to 
figure out how to integrate a story, right? Do you see how if you were just trying to kind of write it off the top of your head, it could be easy to miss some of these elements that, mm -hmm. that are important. My, my original version was very flat. So this actually gave it a lot more plus minus right. um, momentum. So I like that. Yeah, absolutely. Love it. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thanks so much for sharing. Um, maybe let's do one more. Do we have one more brave, brave soul that had the chance to or even if you're not brave, especially yeah, if you're not you brave. <laughs> well, brave is not the absence of fear, right? It's, Absolutely. It's despite the fear. So. <laughs> uh, well, I could. I mean, it's only sort of, I haven't got it written out nicely like Miriam had. Um, but um, so I have, uh, I have a small business. And a partner, and we uh, came across a, a fantastic product um, that's a pain relief product. So uh, it's it's a small pad that we can make ourselves, and um, and it doesn't require heating or cooling. It just works straight out of the package. It's great, and we wanted to market it, but we had no idea, no experience with this, and no idea how to do it. So um, we. Uh, we also gave little workshops and someone approached us um, wanting to do our workshop and not wanting to pay. And so she said, well, I'm a web designer. And we thought, aha. So there was our guide. So, um, uh, and then she helped us. And then there were struggles along the way because there's, of course, she's the guide, but she doesn't fix everything because you've got to provide the content. You've got to, you got the answer. So she comes up with all this and then she'll say, okay, how are you going to sell it so you think oh right we've got to find like a shopping cart all of this so it's like all of these ups and downs and that you can use the 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 whole story as well in the marketing because you're presenting to people you know you have pain do you have pain do you have you know this kind of pain that kind of pain so the whole thing is reflecting even in the story we're using in the marketing can this whole framework can be usable so we've gone through the process of the up and the down the up and the down and then we'll use the whole series of that within the marketing as well i'm havering now so <laughs> <I'll stop. laughs> yeah that's that's wonderful. I love how you, yeah, you kind of turn your own experiences into your story, but then also realize like, oh, this is the same thing as in my marketing, right? So it's so, it's so versatile. It's so applicable to use anywhere. So um, yeah, thank you so much for, uh, for sharing that. And I was just laughing because Mia said, Miriam, you set the bar so high. Guys, don't feel intimidated. We're not here to judge. <laughs> We're here to share. We're here to support. <laughs> so that said, um, Mia, did you want to share your story? Okay, no pressure, no pressure. But is anyone else kind of desperate to, not even desperate, but just like, feel like, ooh, feel like, I feel like I want to share this. You have a marketing genius here who can give you some feedback. So that's the excellent. <laughs> Forget about the fact that you're sharing it with people. Do that. Okay. Going once. Feel free to unmute yourself. Yay. We Woo! got Miguel. Yay. Hi, Miguel. Hello. Hello, Emori. Hey, uh, thank you very much. So I, I did a story, a short story. I hope it works. Yeah. Okay. Um, once my father, my father have a project uh, in Colombia, where I am, uh, wor uh, working with the government, and he once told me if I want to work with him, I need to cover my travel expenses, and then I can join to the project. So my desire was to work with my father. Um, the obstacle, of, of course, was the money to cover my travel expenses. So. I think the guide was an idea I had because my grandmother had uh, a steam machine. So I thought uh, washing carts with this steam machine and then I can get some money. So the struggle was that I had to wash uh, cars for all, all for a longer week. Uh, I don't know, five, four cars each day and but you know, a full inside wash. And also I did 
a, an, a type of a class of uh, Arabic rice and sell it. However, I get the money and I was able to travel. So I was able to join to the project with my father. So I Ooh. think it's a fulfillment. Absolutely, absolutely. Fantastic story, Miguel. Absolutely, you said, I hope this works. It was great, yeah. I was, I was on the edge of my seat the whole time. <laughs> so yeah, really, really nice job. Um, wow, I am just, I am so proud of all of you. Look at you. <laughs> Your your story, your story experts, you put it right to work. Um, and you know, huge, huge. Let's give let's give some love in the chat to to Miguel, Karina, Miriam, and Jennifer, who put themselves out there and uh, you know, helped us all learn from it. Yeah, nice job. So um, yeah, so just to recap then, as we hit the end here, and I'm sad we're, we're hitting the end here. <laughs> this is so much fun, I don't want to leave. <laughs> so, okay, so let's recap what we learned today. So the first thing is before we write a story, we need to get in the right mindset. So I call that flip the script. We're going to shift to the other mindset or put ourselves in that person's shoes. Next, we're then going to use the story structure and kind of fill it in to make sure we have those elements of up and down to keep our audience captivated because then it's going to relate better to their life and it's just going to be more impactful that way. And then finally, we practice writing your own story. For those that didn't get a chance, um, this recording is going to be available so you can always watch it. Um, and then, you know, practice on your own. If you want to share it with me, like, feel free to like connect with me on LinkedIn, share your story. I'm happy to give you feedback, but we were able to practice what we learned. Um, and so I would like everyone to give yourself on the pat on the back. <laughs> nice job, everyone. <laughs> Great job. And so um, I just want you all to remember words have power. Right. Remember the power of words in your life and use these steps, use this story structure to improve your life and career or business. So thanks for much. Thanks so much for having me. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you so much, Tarumi. I just want to tell you something magical that happened in the chat, and I love this. Um, so two people said, let's connect and give each other feedback. I love that. Oh, so that's wonderful. Oh. And I, I love the magic of connections that happens at Power Skills and that you created, Tarumi. And that leads to my question. And if somebody else has a question, please include it in the chat. Uh, when you create a concept, do you who do you test it with? Who do you who do you share that with? Is, is it just the people you work with, or do you go outside of that circle? Sure. Yeah. So it kind of depends on the type of content. So for example, when the kind of the more important the piece of content is, the more important it is for to get more eyes on it. So just an example, when I'm creating my brand story for my clients, I always say, show this to your customer, test it on your customer, see if it resonates with them you know, or before you create your brand story, talk to them, you know, ask questions so that, you know, and you, the brand story is essentially the same thing that I, that structure that I use, it's slightly simplified, but right, that's it. Like, you just have to ask them, what is your desire? Or what are your desires? Well, what's getting in your way, right? It just becomes so easy, because you don't even have to put yourself in their shoes, you're just asking them. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um, so that's, that's one example. And then, um, so if it's like a big piece of writing, like a white paper or something, I always recommend you have a customer review it. Um, for social media, you know, I recommend if you're starting out um, having just your peers, uh, you know, take a look at it. Um, ideally, if you could have a customer give you feedback, that's great. But um, that's, that's sort of uh, what I recommend. 
Thank you so much, Tarumin. You're getting a lot of love in the chat. Everybody's saying interesting, amazing, helpful, Aww, uh, amazing topic. Um, and so people who had to leave along the way also left their comments in for you. Any last questions before we close for Tarumi? So Tarumi, I'd like, I actually went ahead and put your LinkedIn in the chat. I hope that was okay. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So that people could yeah. connect with you. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and I actually really enjoy Tarumi's posts. So um, uh, do, do consider linking in with her. She has some really fascinating posts and I just, I just love them. They're very creative and unique. I thank all of you for being here today uh, at Power Skills. As you know, this is day two of four, two more days to go. Tarumi, I thank you. Uh, the, it's Joseph Campbell. France asked who is the author, Joseph Campbell. And I so nice to have you back. Hope to see you at the next Power Skills. It's always such a pleasure. And I really love how people, thank you for the, the people who shared their stories. I know that takes courage and I really appreciate it. Tarumi, enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you so much. And we hope to see you at the next Power Skills and um, take care, everyone. Yeah, thanks for all the love and honored to be here. And uh, yeah, definitely see you next year. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye.